I'm Heidi O'Malley. Up next on Insider's Roundtable, how the Obama administration's child nutrition bill will affect a school lunch program near you. Insider's Roundtable, underwritten in part by Yakima Regional Medical and Cardiac Center, home of the 15-minute ER guarantee, and by Argus Insurance, helping you today to secure your tomorrow, and by Central Valley Bank, large enough to serve, small enough to care, and by the Yakima Herald Republic, a daily part of your life. Good evening and welcome to Insider's Roundtable. I'm Heidi O'Malley. Our topic tonight is the school lunch program and how new guidelines from the Obama administration might be affecting a school cafeteria near you. Our guests tonight are registered dietitian Kristen Blair with the West Valley School District, child nutrition director out there, and Carrie Opplicker, who is a co uh, uh, dietitian in charge of the SELA School District, also a registered dietitian. Um, school lunches have really become a staple of the American educational system. I mean, it's it's right up there with taking your math classes is the school lunches. So. Um, and for some kids, it's it's the only, it's, it's perhaps the most nutritious meal they get all day, uh, breakfast and lunch for those who, who qualify. Um, how many kids do you feed on a, on a daily basis? Our An school average. district uh, contains about 3,400 students, and uh, on any given day, we, we serve more than 50% of our student population in wow. SELA. What about you? And in West Valley, we have just under 5,000 students, and we serve just under 3,000 meals. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot for you guys to uh, put your heads around. You've got some samples. This is uh, samples of uh, what is offered out in West Valley. Tell us about... Um, your your lunches, what your parameters are right now. Those will be changing um, within probably a year or two years. Um, but w right now, uh, obviously, these look extremely good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank well you. Balanced. Uh, our parameters right now, we use what's called a nutrient standard menu planning. Mm -hmm. So when I design the menus, um, we have to keep in mind a certain calorie level for different age groups. Um, we're analyzing the menus on a weekly basis for calories for um, less than 30% fat, less than 10% saturated fat. We have to have a certain amount of iron, um, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium. Um, and so we're designing the menus to meet all of those requirements. Um, and then, of course, as you can see, we try to design a menu that the kids are going to like, that's appealing, that when they bring their parents with them to school, they are happy with what they see, <laughs> and that they eat what, we, what we're um, designing for them. Because right. if we don't plan a menu that they will want, it doesn't matter how nutritious it is, they're not going to eat it. Right. So these are just examples of actual menu um, days that we have out there. Great. Now I see quite a lot of fresh fresh food, food um, but that tends to be a bit more expensive to have the fresh items, correct? That must be a, a challenge. Oh yes. Uh, we are lucky that in this area we have access to lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, something else that we do when we're planning a menu is that we do seasonal fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and um, the watermelon the strawberries those are seasonal for right now and right. in the fall actually as well but you won't see necessarily the same things December January right. so it, it does vary seasonally but that helps keep costs under control sure. for example if I could add the parfait at the end mm -hmm. that's a breakfast item that okay. we offer both at elementary and secondary schools mm -hmm. those are made from commodity strawberries so frozen strawberries and yogurt, um, so that's something that they can have strawberries all year, but um, it's offered on a commodity basis versus a fresh basis. That's great. Um, that's great. Um, Carrie, how long have the, the standards that you must uh, fall under right now, how long have those been in effect? It's been a, quite it a number It has been for several years. years, and we use a slightly different model than the West Valley School District mm -hmm. in SELA. It's a traditional model called offer versus serve, with the idea that if you offer a number of different uh, food items, or what we call components, then mm -hmm. ch if children choose the uh, 
a variety of components, they're more likely to eat those, okay. and which is just another another model. And within that model, as Kristen mentioned, we are limited to 30%. Uh, fat or less uh, okay. with our menu. Uh, we have sodium restrictions, um, calories with, need to be within a certain range uh, based on the um, uh, age level of mm -hmm. the students right. and um, uh, amongst other pra nutrition parameters and those are closely watched mm -hmm. and we have been uh, under those guidelines for a number of years now. Yeah. Are you optimistic that the new standards are coming out or a little leery? <laughs> Maybe a little of both. You know, I have to say a little of both. I, I am very optimistic. Uh -huh. I think the new, some of the um, uh, things that will be included in the new standards are an increase in fresh fruits and vegetables, especially those that are very intensely colored like dark greens and, and oranges. Um, those are tend to be more dense in nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, although, and our district, like Kristen's, already provides a probably almost twice as many of uh, of those offerings then are actually required. We live in a very uh, an area that's very bountiful in produce. So we're right. very lucky that way. So we right. are um, already pretty much meeting those standards. There will be a, uh, an increase in whole grains offered. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be a little precarious. We already include <laughs> whole grains in our homemade rolls, those types right. of things. Um, but it might um, include whole grain uh, buns for hamburgers and those types of right. things, which not all students are familiar with, right. um, as well as uh, the new guidelines, including uh, more non-meat protein sources, oh, okay. uh, things like lentils and mm -hmm. beans. Again, somewhat unfamiliar to some students, so right. um, Kristen put it best in saying that I think they, those guidelines might have to be tweaked a little to meet <laughs> uh, you know, all students' sure. uh, needs and likes. Sure. And, and Kristen, we were uh, speaking, you are already... Um, kind of tricking and tweaking with, with recipes like pizza crust. You're mm -hmm. using whole wheat um, in some of these foods already? Uh, true. Uh, we, we make our rolls. Mm -hmm. We have whole grain, well, whole wheat flour in them. Right. The kids have been eating them out there for many, many years. Mm -hmm. So they're actually used to some whole grain products. Um, for instance, this is a, a whole wheat um, tortilla. Mm -hmm. So this one, the whole wheat roll, perfectly acceptable. The whole wheat tortilla, <laughs> eh, a little slower. <laughs> but um, they've been exposed to that, at least right. out in West Valley. And right. kind of going off what Carrie said, I think that there are districts that are at different levels of... Um, well, what would you say? In Compliance or participation, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, of design sure. of what could be offered versus what will be mandated to be offered. Right. So um, there are some challenges mm -hmm. with, with however far along um, certain districts are. Mm -hmm. um, and Carrie explained it very well that <laughs> the intent behind some of the new regulations is to increase nutrient-dense food. Mm -hmm those aren't necessarily what many children are exposed either to at home or when they go out to fast food restaurants or right. even maybe restaurants in general. Sure. So it will be um, a good thing to have more exposure um, and other things will be more challenging. Mm -hmm. um, the beans, the lentils, some of the things that they're not used to all the time will right. be a little tougher sell. but. Um, We'll see what we can do. Yeah. yeah, and tricks, if you might use that term, right. I think are are important um, in our district as well as West Valley. We do incorporate whole grains already in, in mm -hmm. items, and the kids are very used to that. Yeah. Um, but we do also offer um, a number of food items that are very familiar to kids, like pizza, like. Mm -hmm. Um, chicken nuggets that right. are already very low in fat. The kids just aren't aware of that. Right. <laughs> and um, I think the way we display and the way we offer some foods uh -huh. and uh, fruits and vegetables, for instance, uh, one that comes to mind um, are kiwi. Uh -huh. um, the kids may or may not have had them at home, but when right. we serve them, they're sliced in half and the kids scoop them out with a spoon. So it's a real novelty, <laughs> right. you know, but it's, and it's something they really enjoy huh. and um, they eat them very well. And things like Kristen has shown there, um, a parfait, you know, using you right. know commodity strawberries. It's it's a very nice, um, you know, looking food item. Something that kids are very likely to choose, and it's healthy too. Sure. Now, part of the the new um, guidelines or the whole the whole uh, new child nutrition bill, it does come with uh, some additional funding, correct? 
um, hopefully, <laughs> we're not bankrupt by then. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, the, then what would that mean? There is additional funding in some areas, and um, based on the information that we've received so far, um, it, it's not entirely clear, but there are some areas where there will be additional funding, but in many areas uh, there won't be. So I think we just have to be creative right. in the way we use our dollars uh, and also monitor very closely and, uh, like Kristen mentioned, uh, purchasing in season, sure. uh, which makes a big difference. It must be very challenging. <laughs> to, it is. <laughs> to work the budget. Oh, quite challenging. Right. Um, in front of us, these are the proposed regulations. So you can see that um, extremely, a little thick, yes. Extremely um, heavy. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are proposing for lunch a six, per, uh, not six, percent, cents. six cents right. increase, um, which is actually pretty minimal. Uh -huh. um, but if that's what they set out, then Carrie is absolutely right. We just have to use good purchasing. You have mm -hmm. to be creative with the menu combinations that you put forth. Mm -hmm. um, and things like monitoring waste and keeping labor uh, under control, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, things outside of just food that right. you need to keep a handle on helps you be able to spend your money um, as much on the more expensive items as possible. Right. One thing that, uh, excuse me, one thing that um, it can be an issue is that products that are more whole grain, products that are lower sodium, right. they tend to be more expensive. Right. So it's not just a wash to, to purchase those items. Sure. It, it, is, it is a big deal. So right. And I think it seemed like that was kind of behind the, the funding increase was, right. was those, right. those points. Right. Um, and volume purchasing sure. is another uh, thing that we're really um, engaging in as well. Um, you know, freight has increased dramatically. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes we're um, uh, we have uh, fuel surcharges as well, so when we do volume purchasing, uh, it helps minimize the loads that we receive and do, helps minimize. Do the school districts ever come together and, and order jointly? Or I, I imagine with five thousand or three thousand for you and two thousand, you, you you have enough to <laughs> buy on your own at a discounted rate. But I well, many districts belong to cooperatives, okay. and so um, actually West Valley, Sela, we both belong to a Puget Sound cooperative of I don't know exactly the number eighty mm -hmm. or so um, districts around the okay. state. So that so gives us a lot a better buying power, right. um, and it's it's totally worth it. it it's yeah. a little bit more work, but you do get better pricing. Right. Mm -hmm. You you touched on on waste. Um, in fact, there has been some school, some editorials in the paper recently kind of talking about the waste of school and food in school. How do you deal with that? How, I mean, I know, I have three kids of my own. <laughs> I know that it, it doesn't all get eaten. How do you, how do you deal with kids just throwing away half their lunch or well, as Carrie mentioned, and what West Valley does as well, is that what we offer, we offer it, it's called offer versus serve. Mm -hmm. Kids are allowed, at least in West Valley, Sela, mm -hmm. allowed to take what they want to take. Okay. So what you see in front of you, these are, if they picked everything on the menu that was offered to them that day, this is That's what they could have. Right. Let's say they came through and it was baked potato day, but they only feel like baked potato and a milk and some strawberries. They're allowed to choose Just those things that. only. Okay. So that having an offer versus serve and having the kids choose what they want to take versus some of the maybe old days where you just put everything on a plate and handed it right. to them, that dramatically, sure. essentially cuts down on the waste and what's being thrown. Right. Um, and also, and probably Carrie would agree with me, we are not in the everything you take you have to eat club. Right. If you take it and you're full, just right. you're fine. Just go right. ahead and, and throw it out. Right. Um, we're not encouraging overeating. So right. that's right. right. That's correct. Um, is what about the, at the elementary level? Is it also um, the same? 
set up, it's not correct. Okay. It is. You it just is. Take what you want. Right. And students in all of our schools, but one, go through the salad bar first, and so I think that they are encouraged to take those items as they're still hungry before right. they reach the and entree that's, level. And that's kind of a new trick, isn't it? It, to, it, it to can be. Place that salad right, bar. Right. Right. And children more. need to take a certain number of components um, as well, so that allows the opportunity for the person, the server at the end of the line, to assure that students have taken what they need to. Mm -hmm. Uh, to complete their meal, but but yes, having those foods uh, there first, also having salad bars at the elementary level at a young child's um, height oh, right. helps dramatically also, right. you know, so. I hadn't thought about that. That's <laughs> pretty important. Um, I remember um, being amazed when my kids were in elementary school um, on some of the holidays, just how many treats would come through the door, especially like Valentine's Day. I mean, people bringing stuff to share at the classroom parties. On days like that, do you notice a difference in the lunchroom um, as far as, you know, if kids have had too much to eat in their classrooms, they might not be eating you know, I can't say that we've specifically monitored that. <laughs> I can tell you the volume level of the cafeteria does go up on those days. <laughs> um, studies clearly show that um, sugar does not lead to hyperactivity, but I think just the whole um, idea that it's a holiday right. and we get to celebrate definitely, right. you know, raises the enthusiasm right. of the students. So I can't say that we've monitored that, you know, specifically. And, and I know that, and the reason I bring this up is I know that it might not be... Uh, in official, you know, the, the guidelines aren't completely nailed down yet, but that was some of the talk that these, uh, the child nutrition bill would include kind of a restriction on maybe bake sales, mm -hmm. um, food outside of the cafeteria and what you offer, restrictions on that. Um, what, what is your understanding so far on, on those restrictions? Well, it is proposed that um, within certain parameters, with certain exceptions, with um, an event being if it's a rarity, it would be exempt from, from the rules. But mm -hmm. it is proposed that um, all food at any time in the schools would fall under the same nutritional guidelines as um, child nutrition programs are that fall under. Okay. Um, not necessarily, of course, fat, calories, uh, right. vitamin A, and so forth. but with the wellness policies, which is also um, another component of the proposals, with the tweaking of wellness policies, it would include those things, such as concessions, such mm -hmm. as student stores, such mm -hmm. as vending machines. Um, now, many districts already have wellness policies in place that address those items. Um, mm -hmm. West Valley does, I'm sure Sela does. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're actually ahead of the curve on that. Mm -hmm. um, and if I could back up just for the parties, Right. We actually, at um, two of our elementary schools, Summit View Elementary and Cottonwood, they have, um, through our Student Health Advisory Council, mm -hmm. volunteered to be, quote, healthy schools. So what they do is they encourage healthy snacks for parties. They don't, they don't um, berate anyone that brings cake or cupcakes. Right, right. No, that, that's okay. But if they, they promote doing healthy things and things Fabulous. just not necessarily surrounding food as well mm -hmm. um, for a birthday party, um, I've heard lots of creative ideas that they do. <laughs> so they are actually moving, I wouldn't say away from parties, right. but trying to find alternate things to do, both not just the fun, little bit more junky things right. to eat, but consume fun things as well and, like I said, non-food things and, and use non-food rewards for parties and, and other um, activities. Um, I'm sure neither of you want to be political, but is there any reluctance as far as the government uh, telling you what to do and, and being a little bit more forceful as far as I think uh, I don't think so. I think that as dietitians, we're really concerned about <laughs> children's health and wellness. Right. Um, but I think that we just need to be careful to incorporate um, realism too. Sure. Like we need to provide very nutritious foods, but we also need to meet children where they are right. and provide foods that they really enjoy eating, or they won't eat them at all. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's something that we really have to <laughs> we have to temper. <laughs> right. How, right now, what kind of say do you have in, in say, uh, vending machines? Are you, is that under your direction or is that under the school's direction? 
It really is under the school's direction in the CELA school district. However, we do review machines. Mm -hmm. There is one vending machine that's um, actually owned by our department, so it's stocked with items that are already pre-approved. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a couple other vending machines that are uh, filled by uh, contract companies. So okay. we do periodically review those and give uh, recommendations to administrators mm -hmm. and they have been um, really helpful in working with the uh, purveyors okay. and making sure that the vending machines meet our our uh, requirements. Right. So yes. So and and is that the same in West Valley? Actually, it's it's been very nice. Um, we do have the wellness committee. We do have the student health advisory committee. Um, both have pushed forward um, kind of the atmosphere that we're promoting. Mm -hmm better available products. We have pretty strict guidelines on what can be offered. Um, and I will say that we, we have, Child Nutrition has a few of our own vending machines. Um, and then the ones that aren't under our control, they still submit nutrient um, labels for us to approve or disprove, right. or not disprove, but, but yeah. acts. Um, <laughs> and they've been very cooperative. So yes. um, there's timers on the pot machines mm -hmm. that are maybe inevitable, but they're not available during the day. The kids cannot um, get pop during the day. So um, right. it, it's been actually pretty positive within the last few years of, of doing um, more proactive mm -hmm. um, guidelines for the machines. Yeah, right. it seems like purveyors will uh, sometimes revert back and place items in machines that <laughs> don't fit our wellness policy, but we do, we do review those and make uh -huh. recommendations. So. How, uh, how often do you see parent volunteers in the cafeterias? You think of parent volunteers, especially at the elementary school where you see a lot of parent volunteers mm -hmm. in the classrooms, but do you see enough uh, helping out in the cafeteria? <laughs> well. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily um, recruit mm -hmm. helpers in the kitchen. Um, they do have to have food handler permits, sure, and, sure. and so it's a little stickier just to have mm -hmm. anyone helping, so to speak. Right. Um, we do have parent involvement, though. Um, they are on a variety of our committees, and so they, they have input mm -hmm. as far as what our policies um, can be tweaked and augmented. Sure. Um, as far as the day-to-day -day helping, we actually see a lot of parents come through just having lunch with their kids. Right. So that's quite positive. Yeah, that um, they're not stopping and helping, but they are. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> they're, they're, they're involved. Yes. Um, how? Um, oh, the the length of lunchtime. It, it, do you have a say in that? Because sometimes it seems like the kids are in such a rush to eat yeah, because they really want to get out don't. and play. <laughs> <laughs> we really would like to have more, but um, at least in our district, um, you know, everything is really driven by um, you know course requirements and um, you know classroom needs, those yeah, types of things. Yeah. So we pretty much are given a schedule and. Uh, take that schedule and go with it. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, if we were to be in charge of that schedule, we would really prefer uh, to have uh, recess first oh. and have lunch after. That way the kids can go and play and then sit and enjoy their meal versus being in a hurry right. you know, to get outside and join their friends. That's so. interesting. Have any schools actually tried that? Do you know? Yes, I know nationwide yeah. there are a number of schools who have. Um, I don't believe anyone's doing it in our valley. Uh -huh. Oh, uh -huh. we actually have a couple. Oh, do you? Okay. We have so a and couple. Do you find that, that successful? Oh, very successful. Right. It doesn't work in every school right. and for a variety of issues. Sure. But we do have a, a couple principals that have have huh. um, gone forward with that, and yes, it's right. it's really nice when recess before lunch happens. That's really interesting. How, and how important is it? Um, obviously, your dietitians. I think I know the answer to this, but how important is it that kids don't just um, they aren't just offered good food, but they know the difference. They know how to make those choices to choose the nutrition, the better nutritional thing. And do you think they're getting that information? Right. I think uh, it comes from a variety of places. It, you know, obviously children's food habits originate at home, mm -hmm. uh, but there are a number of different places they can get information or they can glean things that mm -hmm. they can take home or can help them make choices. Mm -hmm. um, it could be in the cafeteria, being exposed to foods maybe that they really enjoy but they haven't been exposed mm -hmm. to. It could be a favorite teacher uh, teaching a, a class um, or introducing a new concept or even 
from the exercise perspective, um, it could be uh, a situation where uh, at recess there's a jogging club and they get rewards for reaching a certain mileage. There, I think there are many, many different places where kids can get that information and it's really exciting to see when they take that in and make good choices. So of course if you provide good choices it helps too. <laughs> yeah, and I remember uh, in and oh, it's been many years, but <laughs> the cafeterias would have posters and and you have the food pyramid and I'm sure that um, you make an effort to to have those um, types of things up, especially at the elementary school level, to educate mm -hmm. as well as as feed. Right. Absolutely. Our decorations are informational posters. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and also, kids do get. Um, certain uh, nutrition education I'm not sure if it's the same in every district mm -hmm. I know in West Valley I believe it's uh, K through 4 and then I think it's 5 and 6 and then a health class later a little bit mm -hmm. later maybe 8th grade or ninth grade mm -hmm. they do get nutrition education mm -hmm. uh, as part of their curriculum right. so mm -hmm. it is being taught um, whenever it can be reinforced and of course, home is the primary environment sure. that, that these things are going to be reinforced or not. So, right. Well, thank you both so much for, for joining us and, and bringing a sample of, of what you offer. Um, I think it's, it's, you're ahead of the curve. We are in, in this area ahead of the curve as far as um, the new guidelines when they come out. It'll be interesting to see just how much we need to tweak and <laughs> that's right <laughs> how many beans we need to include <laughs> well, thank you both carrie and chris thanks for, Heidi. for joining us and we thank you for watching insiders roundtable insiders roundtable underwritten in part by yakima regional medical and cardiac center home of the 15 minute er guarantee and by argus insurance helping you today to secure your tomorrow and by Central Valley Bank, large enough to serve, small enough to care. And by the Yakima Herald Republic, a daily part of your life.